Kitchen renovations are a big deal for homeowners, and this week we're wrapping up a two-part series to update a 30-year-old kitchen. It's great. I've been helping homeowners improve their home for a lot of years. They think it's intimidating, but it actually can be a lot of fun. And we're here to help. Good job, look at there. Dad's the expert, but I've learned a few things along the way. Practical, realistic home improvement information is what today's homeowner is all about. We're right in the middle of a two-part series where we're helping Brian and Catherine Bales renovate their kitchen. In the 20 years the couple has owned this home, they've had three children and plenty of good memories. But for most of that time, they wanted to update this kitchen. The kitchen is daunting to us. We need new countertops, we need new lighting, we need updated painting. Once you do one of those things, it just snowballs into doing them all. We're intimidated by it. So we help them come up with a plan and get started on the work. That is so beautiful. The first thing to go was this weird see-through fur down. I never understood why it was there. It looked pretty old-fashioned to me. It was fun to watch, and it was even more fun to break apart. Danny said, you're not going to believe it, and he was right. It is definitely a huge change in that kitchen. Once the fur down was gone, we scraped the popcorn texture off of the ceiling before we removed the dated valance over the sink. The valance has been an eyesore to me from the day we moved into this house. I never knew how it could come out, though, so I probably would have attempted it, but I didn't know what it would leave behind. I think if all we did was remove that fur down shelf and the valance, the kitchen would have been totally different. It would have been a lot different. It would have opened that whole area up. It was amazing what that little thing did. Of course, we had a little damage we had to take care yeah, of. Yeah, that's true. We also removed a chair rail that encircled the room, but that revealed another problem. The walls below are really smooth, and then you've got this texture up top, and you're trying to blend them both, and it's, it's hard to do. Now, who did you say put this texture on? I uh, just can't remember <laughs> right now. <laughs> Shortcuts <laughs> never work. I would not recommend painting over wallpaper or adding texture to a wall if you ever plan on remodeling. That's my <laughs> advice. The next big job was painting the cabinets and cabinet doors. And when I say big, I mean big. When I first walked in this kitchen, I was amazed at how many doors, little doors, big doors, tall doors, but hundreds of doors it seemed like. I'm really impressed with how well and how fast Catherine has taken to the paint sprayer. It's almost like she's done it before. Painting the walls, though, proved to be a bigger challenge for a different reason. So one of the last things we do is open the paint can to try out the gray that's going to go on the walls. What are we thinking? We're not loving it, actually. It looks very different on the wall than it did on the paint chip uh -uh. that was like this big. It definitely looks it's purple. lavender. It's purple. OK, it's purple. <laughs> It's more purple than it is gray. Yeah, it does look a little purple. I think we've got to just play with the colors a little bit. We'll get it done. We just got to head back to the paint store. <laughs> so at the end of the first week, we had made lots of progress. We had opened up the space. The ceiling was smooth. The cabinets were painted. And the walls were ready for paint. They just needed a color. After buying several gallons of paint, we made the wise decision to start with some samples. Maggie, would you rather the walls be this color or pink? Uh, pink. <laughs> Finally finding the one we landed on was a huge relief. Hello, hello. Hey, hey. good morning. Right. Looks like you wow. had a busy, busy weekend. Everything we worked out. Are y'all still talking? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, everything went great. I know they really stressed over picking out the right wall color. Everybody does. I think they nailed it, though. It looks yeah, great. I think so, too. It looks really good. Chelsea and I are anxious to see what the light fixtures will look oh, yeah. like in we here. Are too. And uh, we can go ahead and get that in. Then we'll set you guys up an assembly line in here and putting the hardware on. Okay. Oh, good. And then okay. we can put as many of the doors up and drawers in that we can. Yes. And then we'll hold off on this part and this part until we get our granite on in the okay. morning. You know okay. you're getting granite in the morning. <laughs> The lowest point in a kitchen renovation is just before the countertops go on. But when those countertops go on, oh yeah. When building a woodworking project, it's important to use a good quality glue on the glue joints. But after you screw the parts together, you'll notice you'll always get a little bit of glue squeezing out at the joint itself. 
but rather than wiping it away with a damp cloth, which most woodworkers do, what happens is you'll drive the glue into the grain of the wood. You want to avoid that. So what you want to do is scoop up as much of the glue as possible before you wipe it away. And all you need is a straw. You can use a paper straw, but I prefer the larger plastic straws. They're called smoothie straws. So take a pair of scissors and just snip the end off at a sharp angle like that. Then pinch it. You want to form this little spout, right? Just like that. And then all you're going to do is slide it along that joint. It'll scoop up almost all of that glue. Look at that. You can see it gets caught in the straw. You just wipe it off, then you use it again. If you come back and you see there's a little glue left, you can just wipe it down. And now with most of that glue wiped away and it has not had a chance to soak into the wood grain, it's ready to be finished with your stain. This is the second episode of a two-part series in which we're renovating Brian and Catherine's 30-year-old kitchen. Last week, we removed the old, ugly fluorescent light fixtures, and now it's time to replace them with something more modern. What about that? I know Brian was concerned about them being too low. he's so tall. Yeah. I've got this, like... I feel like that is too low. I got, like, a five-inch piece here we can remove. Yeah, I think if we took that out, that would be good. Okay. Okay, thread that through that for me. Can we go ahead and cut off some of those wires, make it easier? No, I already did it. Thanks, Dad. You asked me a question, I said no, and you still did it. Sometimes you have to cut a wire every now and then. Yeah, but I already had it threaded. I can't hear. Mm. Mm. So this is why I wanted to work on one light fixture, and I wanted you to work on the other one. Now I'm starting to understand Mom a lot more. I'm going to go hang out with Mom. All right, how's that? Love it. Okay, that's where it's going. Perfect. For the next fixture, Chelsea has a, a unique method to determine the placement. All right, Brian, have a seat. You're in trouble. All right, <laughs> what do I do now? Oh, wow, I'd be nervous that I'd give you a chair like that. It's like the interrogation room. I like to be practical when it comes to decisions like how high to hang a light fixture, and you can't get more practical than putting the dining chair where it's gonna be to see where the light fixture should be. Want me to stand up? No. Oh. The same thing goes for a toilet paper holder. You just gotta sit on the toilet to figure out where it should go. All right, I got your little workstation set up here. All right. Just like we've turned the corner. <laughs> See? <laughs> Seeing light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> That's what you need to keep thinking. See, it's perfect footprint. Oh, wow. It's very helpful to have that same setup so that you can just pop them right in. And then we have these cool knobs that they can go vertical. Okay. Or they can go horizontal. Oh. One of the things, you see that little tiny cleat right there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That keeps them from spinning. Oh. So once you get it in there, okay. put it in there. Okay. Don't scratch them up or we'll have to repaint them. <laughs> we don't want that. I don't want any of that. <laughs> you think we have a lot of cabinets, and we do, and we have a lot of doors, and you start painting them, and that's a whole lot of work. But when you start putting hardware and hinges back on those doors, it's like three times the work, because you've got two hinges and a knob on each one. One down. 213 to go. <laughs> it's funny how all that prepping and planning and talking about colors and how it's all kind of come together now. I know. It's I'm great loving to see it. Too. Are you? Yes, I love it. We've never been afraid to do the work. We've just been needing direction. And that's what today's homeowner's done for us, pointed us in the right direction. And keep us motivated. We knew we had to have it done. Yeah. You know, you, on a weekend project, you don't necessarily have to finish it. That's I mean, right. A lot of things go unfinished, and I know a lot of people that do that, including myself. But it isn't just us motivating them. Their family is tired of eating out of a temporary kitchen. It's been a challenge, no doubt, feeding a family off of basically a microwave and a refrigerator. But uh, we're glad to see that coming to an end. I want popcorn and we're going to have a nice family meal this weekend, I hope. Yes. Nice dinner at the table. <laughs> Once all the hardware is on the doors, they're ready to go back on the cabinets. This is not a race. Oh, really? <laughs> Saying that makes yeah. it a race. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Did you say the rubber band for that? <laughs> we retired the rubber bands. We're glad to not have rubber bands anymore. All the doors are closing nicely and fitting together and... There's nothing pushing them out. That's right. Yet. She's pretty good with that sprayer, isn't she? Ah, she's yeah. really good with the sprayer. That's, that is a built-in birthday, built birthday present there. I'm going to be sad to there. not have that. After all the many, many moments of me and the spray gun, it is so nice to see the finished product. I'm getting one for myself. His and hers? Yeah. <laughs> they make a pink one? 
I love a pink one. You can use yours to spray had, hers. Yes, right. I think if they had a pink one, Chelsea would have it. Oh, definitely. <laughs> definitely. I guess we're just two like-minded individuals who know that pink is always a great color. You know, whether you're doing a painting project around the house or you just got to simply change out a light bulb in your ceiling fan, having a step ladder is essential for homeowners. And why not make it a good one, right, Dan? Yeah, hey, Jody, you're right. <laughs> Gorilla has come out with a new hybrid project ladder. Great features to this. One that I related to a customer of mine. He was more concerned about stability, getting up off the floor. Sure. He wanted to feel more comfortable. Yeah. Well, this has a wider footprint on the steps themselves. They're actually wider. That made him feel better. I believe that. He also wanted a place he couldn't always hold his tools all the time. Okay. Well, the top oh, of this flips this. open. You can put a paint can here. He can set his individual tools or whatever nails or screws he's working with up in the air. Made him feel a lot more comfortable. I love it. And when you close it, it's got a magnetic close, so it's going to stay closed. And talk about this. Look, when you close it up, it only has about a four inch width here, so it's easy to store. You could just slide this right between the wall and the refrigerator, and it's out of sight, out of mind until you need it. Thanks, Dan. Kitchen renovation is a big job, and this one has taken us two episodes. That's because there's lots of different projects that each take lots of time, but none of them have been more anticipated than what's coming up next. Brian and Catherine have been working so hard on their kitchen, and they're really liking the results with the new painted cabinets, great looking hardware, but nothing creates more excitement than when the granite's installed. Oh my gosh, that looks so good. It's great. Her reaction was just what I thought it was going to be. She could not be more thrilled, and for me, I couldn't be more thrilled to have her happy. Is it wrong to want to hug Granite? <laughs> I know Catherine has been waiting for these countertops for a really long time. The anticipation makes the outcome that much sweeter. It's finally happening. There's a lot of pressure to get it right. It's not like the paint. Go back to the drawing board and try again. This is gonna be what it is for probably 20 more years. I love the color, I love it. And I think we did pretty good. Couldn't be even better. Who picked that color out for the bar? Uh, me. You're welcome. Once the island slab is set, the granite installers cut out the opening for Catherine's cooktop. I've had that cooktop for a number of years and it's unchanged, but it's funny how different it looks in a different surface. Now that it's sitting in the granite, it just looks different, it looks beautiful. I think the granite has kind of enhanced everything about the kitchen. When the granite installation is complete, we're ready for the finishing touches, and one of them is a digital backsplash. Brian owns a sign company, and he's been anxious to use his printers to create a custom vinyl backsplash that no one else has. Now, aren't you just a little bit intrigued and interested in this digital backsplash? Oh, very intrigued. We're gonna use a wall film. We have many different kinds of films. We do murals, we do wallpaper. Same film that we use for our vehicle wraps, we also use on our walls. You can print anything. You know, there's stock photos, stock images, or you can create your own. Makes me think of installing wallpaper and wrinkle and all well, this kind of thing. Is this easier? It is. Adhesive is already on there. Okay. Uh, and until you lock it down with a squeegee, it will come back up. It's easily oh, nice. removable. And when you get ready to remove it and change it, no residue, no glue, anything. So just a little practice you could figure it out. I'm interested to see how easy it is to stick that thing to the wall. I know, it makes me nervous thinking about having holes and bubbles and things. Yeah, yeah, I know. I'm glad he's doing it. So let's unroll this and see what we came up with for the design. Oh, yeah. Nice. So I like what Catherine said too. She said, if I don't like it, he can just make me more. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Chelsea and Danny are jokesters. They play tricks on each other and us every now and then. But I think Brian has a really good idea to turn the tables on them. Last night, I decided that we would do a, something a little different. Oh, <laughs> thinking wait about, a minute. Where did you get that from? <laughs> we're thinking about putting that up, because we're so proud. Let's, right. let's hold oh, it up boy. and see how it looks. Yeah. That's hilarious. So which one do you like? <laughs> oh, that's a tough one. <laughs> It just was so funny because Danny's been such a prankster all week and... We got him back a little. Yeah, I got him back a little. So I mean, really, why wouldn't they put 
our picture on their backsplash. It only makes sense. I'm a little disappointed. I'm disappointed too. And since this is vinyl, mm -hmm. you said you use it on cars, and it's mm -hmm. easy to clean off. And it's easy to clean. Like it's uh, UV laminated, so nice. you're not, it's not going to fade. And when you get ready to remove it, there's going to be no residue. There's going to be no glue. All right, Danny, what we're going to do is just pick it up and just tack it in the corner. This stuff will stretch up to 150%, so that's how we're Weird. able to do it around compound curve. Brian's been pretty active on everything that we've been doing, and he's been involved in it. But when the sign material came out, he became this whole vinyl ninja. It was pretty wild. It was pretty crazy. The way that you want to get the majority of the air out is you want to work it out toward the edges. So you just start at the top, and you just push it down. You get to a spot where you need to cut it, just like wallpaper. So we're going to go right down to the backsplash. Go ahead and start at the top and go all the way out. There you go. So you got a few wrinkles. So what we'll do, pick it up and just go again. There you go. Good there job, go. Dad. Mm -hmm. It's empowering. We'll put you to work. You know, if this TV thing doesn't work out, I do have room for a couple new installers. So I'll keep his number. Now that the batch flash is complete, we can begin our cleanup. It's been a long two weeks, but the Vale's kitchen is almost complete. Are we done here? I need to leave before it's time to put all that stuff back in the cabinets. This kitchen has been waiting 30 years for an update. The space seems smaller than it actually was thanks to darkly stained cabinets, the pointless fur down, and a dated balance. Plus, the fluorescent light fixtures and vanilla laminate counters made the room feel unnecessarily institutional. But after some good decision making and two weeks of really hard work, the room has been transformed. Removing the fur down and balance has opened up the space so that your eyes can be drawn to the new light fixtures which give it a clean, modern feel. Everything is brighter now too, thanks to the lighter color we painted the cabinets and the new tint that was added to the walls. The darker shade of paint Catherine chose for the island cabinet just adds the right amount of contrast. Plus it coordinates perfectly with the granite that she's been waiting so long to enjoy. By the way, the materials and installation for these countertops totaled about $2,300 and all the other materials combined came to just less than $1,500. So Brian and Catherine's kitchen renovation cost about $3,800 and I think it's safe to say they're happy with it. Love, 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 love it. So many things I could specifically point out that have made such a huge difference. The granite, of course, is a huge transformation, and the paint on the cabinets has made such a big difference. Just when you walk in, it just feels so light and bright in that room. Had we known that we could tackle painting the cabinets on our own? And that you were an expert sprayer? That's had right. Had we known that? Had we, we known that, we probably, you would have set me to that task years ago, I right? I have missed out on many Mother's Day <laughs> presents. We did a lot of work but I don't think we ever would have tackled it on our own if we hadn't had today's homeowner and Danny and Chelsea pointing us in the right direction. It really is a place that I feel happy to be in and I love that. I've wanted that for a while, so I'm, I'm ecstatic. Yeah, I couldn't be happier. You know, most of the home improvement television shows make remodeling projects look so easy. And this one was fairly simple, but it was a series of tasks that had to be done. What you didn't see is dozens of hours by these two dedicated, hardworking homeowners to pull it all together. One thing they did right was to keep a positive attitude because I think all along they realized exactly how great this kitchen and breakfast room would look after all of that hard work was done. I hope you enjoyed seeing it all come together, and I hope I'll see you next week and every week right here on Today's Homeowner. I'm Danny Lifford. Each one of them has its own kind of... Mark that one for the blooper reel. <laughs> you want to see me dance? Um, no. Ow! Cut. <laughs> Be sure to join us next week when we reinvent an old formal living room as a multi-purpose room for a young family.
Yeah, if y'all ever need a, you know, stand-in. That's right. For Danny and Chelsea.